Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Crystal. Thank you for being here with me today. Um, I hope you all are doing well. As you know, I'm back here today with another prophecy. Actually, a couple other prophecies that have been pending its release a little while now. But before I begin, I hope you all are staying in the secret place, staying under the wings of the Almighty God, staying under His shadow. These prophecies that I'm about to release, I'm just forewarning you that these are things that many people are not gonna be talking about these prophecies are directly from the lord's heart um these messages are very heavy i suggest that you take your time to listen to these messages please don't listen to these messages back to back you will just find yourself in a hole <laughs> in a very dark hole and that's not where the lord wants you these messages are for the edification of the body of christ these messages are for the warning of the body of christ and i am here to do just that i'm here to deliver the word of the almighty god um, as he wants me to as he speaks so will i speak to you no matter what you think no matter your opinion or your comments I must speak what the Lord has asked me to because this channel belongs to the Lord. I am not here doing this on my own will. The Lord has ordained me and anointed me for this type of work. I am honored. I am honored to be here and speak his word um, as an ex-Hindu who not just practice Hinduism, but I dabbled in other, other new age practices for me to be here speaking his word is still a miracle to me in my mind how far i've come in just one year yes so in march 2023 it has been one year since the lord has found me and one year since i've come to know who the almighty god is the lord jesus christ i've come to know him in this secret place it's been one year in my walk on my journey with Christ Jesus and it has been one tremendous year. I will never trade it for anything on this earth. No matter how many times I had to go through the fire and I had to go through trials and tribulations, I, I knew I had to do this in order to break curses on my life, to break curses off my bloodline, in order to step into my purpose here in Christ Jesus and it has been a really 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 tough journey for me because I have been faced with non-stop spiritual warfare non-stop spiritual warfare if you're not familiar with spiritual warfare I want you to just research those two words and think about how much the Lord has revealed to me through not just prophecy but through experience in my life over the past year that relates to spiritual warfare so I know quite a lot about spiritual warfare and there I say uh, witchcraft or occultism I have not been able to speak on those topics yet because it has not been time it has not been my time to speak on those topics yet but i promise you the lord wants me to teach you on these topics he wants me to reveal to you all the secrets that he has shared to me over the past year i believe what i know what i've learned over the past year can change so many lives can even save lives um especially when it when it comes to spiritual warfare and how to fight this is something the churches don't teach you your pastor don't teach you especially people who never had to fight when i say never had to fight i mean people who grew up in christianity you know they grew, they grew up knowing the lord and knowing who he is it's different it's different when you grew up not knowing who the lord is you grew up in false religion you grew up in 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 witchcraft you grew up in, in in false doctrines it's it's different for people like me to eventually come to the lord and to think that i will not have 
to go through spiritual warfare constantly. That's one of the biggest transition coming from false religion into Christ Jesus. It's one of the biggest transitions that many Christians, many people who are in Christianity, they don't understand. They don't understand how much people like me have to fight and continuously fight not just for my life, my soul, but for my family, for the purpose and the promise that the Lord has ordained over my life. I, it's a constant battle. Like I said, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I went off topic, but these are the teachings that the Lord has been teaching me in the secret place over the past year. I already warned you that it's gonna be a hard pill to swallow. It's going to be deep, it's going to cut, it's going to convict, it's, it's going to do exactly what the Lord wants it to do because this is his word. Just don't come for me. You want to be angry with somebody, be angry with the Lord. Take this message back to the Lord and ask him in all your anger, ask him, you argue with him and you hear what it is he, tell, he tells you. And yes, you can argue with the Lord. Right? There's nothing you can hide from the Lord. He knows your entire heart. And this is something he told me. He convicted me about a couple of times. Um, <laughs> I was really, really ang angry about a, a personal matter of mine. You know, I came into this secret place and I was trying to hide my anger. I was angry with him for a mere moment. And I was trying to cover the anger that I was feeling. I was trying to be nice. <laughs> I was trying to be nice. The Holy Spirit convicted me. He said, tell me exactly how you're feeling let me know how you're feeling you can't hide your feelings from me and it's okay i'm telling you it's okay to be angry with the lord if you really truly love the, the lord you can't stay angry with him for long you just can't it's just it's impossible that love that you have for the Lord will just consume you eventually that you won't be able to stay angry with him but it's okay to get angry with the Lord and when you do take all your feelings back to him tell him exactly what you're angry for tell him exactly how you feel hide nothing from him just like Hannah did in all her bitterness in all her anger in all her frustration you know how angry you need to be that you can't even open your mouth to express yourself do you know how angry and bitter you need to be I, I actually been through that I actually went through that bitterness and that ang angry phase about certain things in my life and I took it back to the Lord words couldn't come out my mouth because I was just so angry my anger turned into tears and the, the Holy Spirit took me through it all he took me through it all <laughs> the Lord knows our hearts there's nothing we can hide from him he knows we're human human beings with emotions he has emotions as well he gets angry at times but his anger is but for a moment his mercy is everlasting the lord has placed it in my heart to ask you to sow sow into this ministry sow into the prophetic sow into what he's doing here on this channel the the revelation he's he has been revealing to you the mysteries he has been revealing to you his teachings he told me to tell you that you should sow into this ministry now i was never a big fan of sewing i never really understood the concept uh, i guess the concept that i had in my mind was like it was corrupted <laughs> it was corrupt corrupted the concept of sewing i had in my mind was corrupted because of these churches and these pastors and they who corrupt the things of god and use it for their gain but the lord had me um understand that in order for you to connect with somebody in order for you to connect with a ministry or his grace we do so by sowing a seed into that person's ministry or into that person more than likely when this video releases there will be links in the description on how you can sow two numbers he has been showing me 
um, is the number five and the number seven. The, five, the number five represents grace. Um, over the past couple of months, I've been seeing it quite a lot. And even when he was talking to me about sewing, he showed me this number. So I figure if you want to connect with this grace, if you want to connect with the grace that he has given me, you can do so through sowing a seed into this ministry. Also, the other number I've been seeing is, seeing is the number seven, the number of perfection or completion. Um, this is also considered the lost number or a holy number. It's a number he constantly shows me all the time. So according to you, according to what you will and what you would like to give, um, you can give a seed of five. So it could be $5, $50, $500, um, $5,000. And I, I believe I will have a link to crypto. Um, in the description bar so you can sow into this ministry through crypto as well as fiat currency dollars you know whatever currency you want to sow you can do so through paypal more than likely i have these things up and running by the by the time i post this video um but yeah um, the number seven, you can sew seven dollars, you can sew seventy dollars, seven hundred, seven thousand, up to you, okay? Um, no, I'm not forcing you to do anything, I'm just telling you what the Lord told me. When you sow a seed here, you sow a seed into the Lord and the work that He is doing here on this earth. You sow a seed into His kingdom here on earth, and that seed will multiply. It will just multiply because that's what the Lord does. He multiplies everything you bring to him and he returns it back onto you with a hundred times fold blessings beyond your imagination. I know a couple of you all have emailed me. I'm sorry, I haven't been able to get back to you, but um, I'll try my best to. Um, I, I Also, if you're emailing me about like me with the impression of me being a psychic, that I can tell you everything about your life, about different aspects of your life don't please don't stop it <laughs> stop it please 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 i will not respond to messages like that if you have prayer requests if there's a specific area in your life that you want healing or freedom or or deliverance in or a word from the almighty god you can send me a prayer request as it relates to that but please don't demand that i respond to you as a psychic word about your entire life okay you're confused you're confused about who a prophet is from the almighty god you're confused about the prophetic you're confused so emails like that i won't be i won't be responding to so continue to send me your emails i, I love hearing for, from you all sometimes i read the emails and i forget to respond but i love hearing from you all i love just hearing from you all the fact that I've entered into your homes or your vehicles or wherever you found me, you found this video. It's a personal message and I really do appreciate your time and your uh, your messages. I was really sick since the year began and still struggling a little bit, but we fight and we fight. The Lord gave me this prophecy in January. Um, this prophecy I received in the 2nd of January, 2023. And this was um, this was probably a month before the lightning struck the statue in Brazil. When that happened, I immediately knew well it was directly correlated to this prophecy he, he had given me, which well I was not able to release it at that time. He spoke to me in the book of Micah, chapter three specifically. Right, so we're gonna look at that chapter, and I'm gonna read the verses. Um, which he gave me all right so i feel as though i'm gonna read this entire chapter chapter three um if i don't have the words on the screen please pull out your bibles micah chapter three it basically speaks about the judgment of the lord on the heads and the princes of israel right because they have misled the flock uh with false prophecy diviners and they did all this for rewards and money and even jobs um now this this prophecy is directly against these type of people especially 
those who operate in churches um, in the building of the church or the house of the Lord he we know that judgment begins in the house of the Lord so this is why the Lord is saying here that these heads and these princes who he have called um, some he, he have not called but those whom he have called they have corrupted themselves they have um, they have been eating off of the flock and those whom he did not call they are lying they are profit lying <laughs> i heard someone say that the other day on a tiktok he's like he went to a church and the pastor was completely profit lying you know there was no truth coming out of this pastor mouth and he was trying to speak about my life but he was profit lying <laughs> anyways yeah so these people are profit lying they are lying they are using divination to woo the flock of jesus so he is against these people he basically is against the churches the churches whom he has taken away his holy spirit from and i said hey i pray you O heads of jacob and ye princes of the house of israel is it not for you to know judgment who hate the good and love the evil who pluck off their skin from off them and their flesh from off their bones verse 3 also says they also eat the flesh of my people and flay their skin from off them and they break their bones and chop them in pieces as for the pot and as flesh within the cauldron i believe in the book of ezekiel it also spoke about this verse he also spoke about this verse where the lord took serious judgments against um a couple of men whom he sent out to judge his people they went astray and so they were actually doing the same thing as verse 3 says they were basically um putting the flesh of his people in a call in a cauldron and 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 cooking them and the lord took serious action against these men and they end up ended up dying i can't remember the exact exact chapter but it's written in the book of ezekiel and verse 4 says then shall they cry unto the lord but he will not hear them he will even hide his face from them at that time as they have behaved themselves ill in their doings and i believe i prophesied this last year i said the lord is about to raise up um many whom he has called and ordained many people in high places are gonna fall they're gonna basically come down or fall right and this will be the lord's doing these people are doing wrong in his sight they are misbehaving um in his house and he's gonna get rid of them right he said in this time when he judges them they will cry unto him but he will not hear them verse 5 says thus saith the lord concerning the prophets that make my people err that bite with their teeth and cry peace and he that put it not into their mouths they even prepare war against him right so he's saying here that they are prophets they are prophets who are doing wrong they are lying they are biting with their teeth and they are crying peace they, so their mouth is not filled with the meat of god they are not speaking the word of god and they are lying they're saying peace when there is no peace the lord is saying that he put nothing in their mouths for them to speak and so in their hearts they even prepare war against the lord hence verse 6 says therefore night shall be unto you that ye shall not have a vision and it shall be dark unto you that ye shall not divine and the sun shall go down over the prophets and the day shall be dark over them then shall the seers be ashamed and the diviners confounded yea they shall all cover their lips for there is no answer of god right so he's saying here he will make these people ashamed they, he will make them ashamed of every word that they speak which he has not given them they will be confounded just as the wicked is confounded just as our enemies are confounded these people will be confounded um, because they went against the almighty god over his people over his flock and if it's one thing the lord don't play with is his people is his people 
Verse 8 says, But truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. Micah, or prophet, he's saying here that he is full of the power of the Holy Spirit. And because he is a prophet sent and ordained by the Lord, he is full of judgment and might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel the, his sin. So, like all prophets, even the prophets today, um, we are filled with the judgment of the Lord, the might of the Lord, the power of his Holy Spirit. So, it's ridiculous to hear Christians speak and say things like, you can't judge me, or we are not supposed to judge. We all are supposed to judge and we are supposed to do it righteously. But prophets are given the judgment of the Almighty God because the prophets here on earth do the work of the Almighty God. They do the work of the Almighty God. So in, in our hands, he places his judgment. He places his might and his power to go forth and declare transgression in his house, to go forth and declare sin in his house, to warn his people what is coming of the impending doom so as prophets it's our duty to judge with power with might of the lord right so verse 9 says hear this i pray you ye heads of the house of jacob and princes of the house of israel that abhor judgment and pervert all equity now this from verse 9 to verse 12 is actually where Jacob is declared judgment against the house, against the house of Israel, the house of Jacob, the princes and the house of Israel. He's declaring judgment. This is judgment that came directly from the Lord, which the Lord placed in Micah's mouth for him to speak. This is why when we speak a word as prophets, it will go forth and do that thing which the Lord had intended it to do because his word cannot return unto him null and void. That's why as prophets, not just prophets, but anyone who operates in the prophetic, we need to be so careful with our tongues, with our mouth. So we need to always bear in mind the power that we carry as, as prophets ordained by God. So Michael went out to prophesy verse 10 he said they build up zion with blood and jerusalem with inequity verse 11 says the heads thereof judge for reward and priests thereof teach for hire and the prophets thereof divine for money yet will they lean upon the lord and say is not the lord among us none evil can come upon us so michael is telling you exactly what these people are doing how wicked and evil they, they have become how perverted they have become they have perverted the things of the lord and he has he is seeing that with his own eye this is exactly what's happening in churches right now right now this is exactly what's happening in churches and the lord saying he's coming for these people he's coming for these people who are in his house the house of the lord the house of Israel, he is coming for these people to judge righteously. Many Christians go to church. They believe in church. They believe in their religion. They believe in the, 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 the doctrine which they, they are being taught. In churches that they have become asleep on the pews. They have become blind and deafened. So they can't tell you, hey, well, yes, this is actually what's happening in my church. Most of them can't admit it. Most of, most of the Christians that go to church cannot come out and tell you exactly how their church has been behaving, how their pastor has been behaving, how the people there have been treating one another. They won't tell you what's actually happening behind the scenes of the church, but they will invite you to come to church every Sunday. They will invite you to tithe every Sunday. They will invite you to, to come to all the social events of the church, but they won't tell you exactly what's happening until you reach there and you become corrupted. 
you become corrupted in these people churches he's saying here the heads they judge for reward the priests they, they, they teach for hire they teach for money for jobs the prophets lie they lie using divination for money verse 12 says therefore shall zion for your sake be plowed as a field and jerusalem shall become heaps and the mounting of the house as the high places of the forest the house of the lord must be plowed the 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 place of the lord will be plowed not just the place but the people the flock as well um because you need to understand and i believe i did a prophecy on this title seduction or, or something along those lines where i spoke about false prophecy false prophets and the people who believe in false prophecy and i told you all that the people who connect themselves with false prophecy also fall under the judgment of the false prophet okay you cannot get away from that judgment it's the same thing here the lord is saying that the people right the house of israel they are going to be judged as well as the people who who are the heads of the house of israel right the flock who are under these people they are going to be judged because it it's your duty as a child of god to know who the almighty god is to know who jesus christ is if you don't know who the almighty god is you don't know his words you don't know how he moves you don't know what his spirit feels like you will be deceived you will be deceived you will be damning your soul to hell because of deception and lies and divination of these people you listen to you 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 follow these people have blood on their hands this is why the lord takes his judgment against these people so seriously they are responsible for his flock which they are sending to hell they have manipulated the word of god they have seduced his people with false prophecy and because these people are now blinded they are deafened their heart is now closed they they can't for the, their own selves recognize that they are deceived they can't for themselves recognize that there is witchcraft in their churches they can't for themselves recognize that their pastor is preaching heresy unless the almighty god takes them up unless he speaks to them using his word or he appears to them in the secret place and lead them into his truth this is why it's important to have a relationship with the lord it's important to seek the lord in the secret place the first thing jesus told his people his disciples when they asked him what are the signs of the end times what are the signs of of your second coming he said take heed lest any man deceive you how can you not let anybody deceive you first of all by knowing christ jesus don't wait to go to church to know the word don't wait to go to church to encounter the lord most of you don't even know what the holy spirit feels like because the holy spirit from your churches have been taken away the lord has taken his spirit he has left the building you have jezebels in churches you have witches warlocks in churches you have demons in churches they are the ones leading the choir witches witches are the ones leading the choir the witches are the ones performing the hexes and the curses over the congregation and you don't know you just go to church and clap your hand and sing sing songs and you're clueless you have no sense of discernment spiritual discernment comes from the almighty god jesus christ it comes from prayer it comes from the secret place 
it comes from knowing the Lord Jesus. Spiritual discernment. Discernment is not a decision you make. Discernment is not a feeling you get. Discernment is knowing in your heart, knowing in your heart what is right and what is wrong. Knowing in your heart that this is from God and this is not. Discernment is knowing the truth from a lie. That is discernment. And you can only find spiritual discernment in Christ Jesus in prayer. In prayer. Once you know his Holy Spirit, you know how he moves. Nobody can deceive you. 